Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we have for you. A $213 million XRP hack attack against Chris Larson. Oh, we're going to get into it. You better believe it. And how about this one? The SEC running scared. Oh, the end is near, my friends. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, it is $1.72 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off by 1.1% in the last 24. 42,800 plus for Bitcoin right now. 2,300 plus for Ethereum. And we see 96.5 billion plus for Tether market cap. Number six is 50 cents XRP off by 4% on the 24 hour, off by 1.7 on the seven day. We know we're going the wrong way, but you know what? We know we're also approaching a very, very critical window to pay attention to when it comes to XRP price and fundamentals. Now, if you haven't seen the video I just put out this morning, go watch it about automated market makers and the recent vote and the approval. Oh, it's going to get good. It's going to get good, ladies and gentlemen. Ranging right now between 49 cents on the bottom, 52 on the top. We'll keep an eye on it. And I want to tell you very quickly, you guys know that the best crypto gold silver IRAs on the planet, bar none, are in I trust capital. And I tell you something, think about this, ladies and gentlemen, think about this for a second. You have your own back office. You can control where your money is in your IRA with all the functionality and control over your portfolio. There really is, and think of this for a moment too, understanding the awareness is being brought because of ETF approvals for Bitcoin. We know that the rest of the market's about to get them as well. We're not going to just see one ETF for one asset, right? This is about to go crazy, right? I think we all understand this. At least I do. And I'll tell you this, you know, think of this. As a retail investor, we don't have the opportunity to get institutional custody. But you do inside of an IRA because they require to provide you with institutional custody. There is no downside here. This is amazing. And the only thing better than buying crypto is buying tax-free crypto. You could do that inside of here. Click the link to my sponsor. Listen to this, 21 shares. President says Spot Bitcoin ETF is one of the best ETF launches of all time. And, re- and think about that back office very quickly where the price of Bitcoin has been down. You could have seen that, gone into your back office, pulled out of that for a second, and then gone back into it without any penalty or effects. Think of that kind of control that you would have for your own retirement. What have you seen in terms of flows, and are they making you confident? Yes, is the extremely short answer to that question. At the end of the day, these flows have been really promising. It's one of the best ETF launches of all time. And there you have that. So you can see how it's being received. Now, remember that like the grayscale, they have to sell out of that, then buy back into the fund, right? So there is a lot of this wash that's taking place that affects price. And then obviously you have people taking profits and things of that nature as well. So, you know, uh, more to come. You know, these are long-term products that are being introduced that will be in play for a very long time. So I wouldn't judge these things off of the last few days. Now, looking at this, Kraken wins court battle against to protect uh, user transaction data in XRP lawsuit. And this is basically referencing the Zakhanov case. And according to court statements shared by Mr. Hubert, Kraken Exchange will be personally notifying its clients regarding the class action lawsuit against Ripple Labs. The court statement outlined that the sample notification that would be sent to concerned customers via email, it assures the customers that their personal information remains secure and undisclosed to third parties. It says here... No, none of your information has been shared or will be shared by Kraken. Rather than providing your contact information to court, we've chosen to contact you directly because we hold our clients' privacy and security in the highest regard. At the heart of the Zakhanov Ripple uh, legal dispute lies whether XRP should be designated as a security or a currency. This is a case out of California that had had been moved to see what the finding of the SEC versus Ripple case would be, which, as we know so far, is that XRP in and of itself is not a security, right? The plaintiff 
plaintiff levied the charges against Ripple and CEO Brad Garlinghouse and its subsidiary XRP2, alleging they offered XRP as an unregistered security. Meanwhile, the SEC Ripple ruling, the judge determined XRP does not qualify as a security. So the looming question remains whether Zakhanoff versus Ripple case in a different circuit uh, court will align with the SEC ruling. I don't see how it can't, but you know what? It is California, so we'll wait to see what happens there. However, this is breaking right here, and I tell you, this is massive, ladies and gentlemen. You are seeing a full retreat now from the SEC. The SEC has just filed a brief in the debt box case that intends to dismiss the lawsuit against the company. The SEC is choosing dismissal rather than face possible sanctions from the judge for misleading the court in order to secure a restraining order and asset freeze against debt box. And this is what you need to see right here. It is this line. The commission has determined that the best way to proceed is to dismiss this action without prejudice. And it should have been with prejudice, no doubt about it. And, uh, and it's absolutely what actually Prosper says as well. Here, the specific section, the SEC has to eat crow and indicates its intention to file a dismissal without prejudice. In my opinion, any dismissal should be with prejudice, and I agree with that. The SEC should not be allowed to go after debt box again for the same issue in the future. There's no question. They should not be able to pick this up and finish it. And Jeremy Ho Hogan chimed into this and basically uh, to the remark of Eleanor Terrence's tweet highlighting that same exact line there. Jeremy says, wait, the SEC thinks that a multi-million dollar fraud was perpetrated against Americans, but lets it go in order to save itself embarrassment and or money. Kind of like getting your girl pregnant, then forcing her to have an abortion to not have child support obligations. Oh, Boy, Jeremy can really, really put a spin on it. <laughs> That's a nice angle, Jeremy. Yeah, we like it. John Deaton chimes in here and chastises the SEC as well. He comes in and says, Gary Gensler, this disgrace falls under your leadership. And it absolutely does. Or lack thereof. First, your lawyers were described by a federal judge as hypocrites lacking faithful allegiance to the law in the Ripple case. Later, an appellate court ruled or your denial of a spot Bitcoin ETF was arbitrary and capricious in the Grayscale case. Despite those incredible findings, findings that would make any lawyer or leader cringe from embarrassment and humiliation, your agency's lawyers continued to act with a complete disregard for the truth and for justice. Now you run away, attempting to shield your unethical lawyers from facing the very law they swore to uphold? Uh-huh. Yeah. Met a law man. Former securities litigator comes in and says this. Astounding. I've never seen anything quite like this in more than 30 years of representing clients adverse to the SEC. In 30 years, this man hasn't seen this, and he's been working in cases with the SEC for 38, three decades, right? This is unbelievable to me, ladies and gentlemen. He says, I actually think this voluntary dismissal could make it more likely that the SEC lawyers involved in the misrepresentations to the court will be sanctioned. Oh, Fred Rispoli chimes in and says, agree. You have to hope Debt Box gets aggressive and opposes the motion to dismiss and instead seeks dismissal with prejudice and continues to pound the table for sanctions. Debt Box has excellent lawyers. This will get interesting. So this is not over. Oh, capitulation, a breaking point, right? This is a point where the SEC has had to abandon its stance because they're fearful that they will be sanctioned from this space altogether. Now, it's suggested it could be individual lawyers that are targeted instead of the agency. But don't think that the SEC as an agency doesn't understand that to be a shot across its bow. Right? We are reaching a point now where Congress must act. Because if the SEC finds itself sanctioned and certainly running from the fear thereof, 
Where is the regulator CFTC and where is Congress to put the legislation through to finally put this in the lane it should be, in the order of regulatory oversight that it should be? Oh, this is a big story right here. Zach XBT uh, reported, it appears Ripple was hacked for $213 million XRP worth $112.5 million. Chris Larson comes in and says this just a few moments ago. Yesterday, there was an unauthorized access to a few of my personal XRP accounts, not Ripple. This is terrifying, ladies and gentlemen. He says, however, we were quickly able to catch the problem and notify exchanges to freeze the affected addresses. Law enforcement is already involved. Well, thank goodness for that. And I'm glad to know that Chris's accounts are safe at this time. So uh, we'll wait to hear more on that if there's more to report there. Uh, shout out to Chris and everybody else there. But look, where are we today? This is what the charts looked like from back in the day, 2017, 2018. We all know it. We saw what happened in 21, 22. Here we are right now. This is the channel, top of the channel band. And this is the bottom of that band, that channel. This is where we are. Will we see a repeat and an explosion to the top of that band again right here? And if so, what would that take us to? Would it be the 5 to $10 mark or would it be the 100 to $250 mark? Would it take 26 days like it did between here and there in 2017 to 2018? Would it? Or will it take years? I don't know, but I know one thing. Everybody's seeing these charts the same way. Is it going to be up, down, or sideways? Because those are our choices, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know the answer, but I couldn't be more excited the fact that I'm here for it with you. Digperspectives.com, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Freedom Zone where we can freely address topics without the concern of censorship, without the concern of shadow banning, which is something that we have been victim to for years since we've been in the influencer business. So this is where we are today, and I'm glad that we have this group, and it is a great group of people. There also is a private Telegram group that you can join in here. I will put that fresh link inside for you guys as well to have continued great conversations in there. And we're taking on lots of things that we talk about on the channel and off. And the main subject today is really dealing with going back down the rabbit hole of ETHgate, and there's much more to the story than we ever imagined. I hope you'll join us inside. Come on in. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. We'll see you in the Freedom Zone.